It is Monday, August 28th, and this is a Fox News alert. More danger on the way for Texas. Millions waking up to another scene of epic flooding as thousands of state and National Guard service members descend on the scene of Hurricane Harvey. Hurricane Harvey, now a tropical storm, bringing catastrophic flooding to Houston with no sign of relief in sight. We were trapped in a house that with rising water. It became very dangerous very fast. They should have told the city to evacuate. We'll rebuild. It's going to take time. If you drive into water, you're taking your life into your own hands. You are watching Fox and Friends First. I'm Heather Childers. And I'm Jackie Abanez in for Rob Schmidt this morning. President Trump now preparing to head directly into the disaster zone. And we have live Fox News team coverage for you this morning. Janice Dean, of course, tracking the very latest. We have Casey Stiegel live in Dickinson, Texas. And Rob Schmidt live in Rosenberg. Air trucks can't get out, and these residents are going to come out and, and, and understand what has happened overnight with a controlled release uh, of the attics and Barker reservoirs because they're, they're releasing this water because they're worried that the dams will break. If the dams break, Houston, downtown Houston, floods, and that is apparently a better option at this point than to flood the southwest and some other neighborhoods intentionally on top of the expected rain that is going to add more torrential downpour and further flooding with thousands of people being rescued just blocks from here. If I could just reach over uh, uh, for one second, Monica, I know you're a resident and this is live TV and you were just walking up the street, but have you heard the news that they're going to release, they've already begun to release water out of the Bayou Dam and more flooding is coming. Uh, I trust you live here. Have you decided what you're going to do and are you frightened this morning? Well, actually, I was just, um, I went to my friend's house. He lives in Holt. It's like a few blocks from here. And the water is to my waist. And I went over there because it's not power and to drop off a phone charger. Drop off a phone charger. Do you know if she, did she mention about what she's going to do now with their releasing water from the dams to intentionally flood the already flooding Buffalo Bayou? Well, he, I don't think he doesn't know. I don't think he knows. Yeah, because, you know, it's no power, it's no news. He doesn't know anything. Monica, are you okay? Are you guys doing okay? Martha, I yes, apologize. Yes. yes, it's a little bit scary over there because the water is really deep and it's dark. And But, yeah, we're fine. Thank you, Martha. Guys, that is exactly what we're talking about. The situation, a resident that Martha brought a phone charger to someone stuck here that's been told to step put. is going to wake up and be told, by the way, you may want to leave with nowhere to go in this horrible situation that Harvey has brought, guys. Well, and she makes a good point, Griff. I mean, people don't have access mm -hmm. to television. They don't have power. I know the phone service out across massive areas, so they're not going to know what's going on on top of it. How does he even charge his phone, I'm wondering? Yeah. No electricity. All right. Thank you so much, Griff. That's we'll right. A lot of people don't know what's coming. Yeah, we'll check back with you. Well, first, though, we want to check with uh, Janice Dean, of course, who can tell us about the very latest in terms of, you know, in, uh, along with the voluntary or the controlled releases, you have additional rain coming. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not a good situation uh, any way you look at it. And they have received over two feet of rain in this area. You know, the National Weather Service had it right. Uh, and it, at times it didn't look like it could possibly come true, but it did. Over two feet of rainfall in a very short period of time. We're dealing with a year's worth of rain in just a matter of hours. They were seeing four to six inches an hour of rainfall, which is 
meteorologically insane. That is what we're going to be dealing with, unfortunately, over the next couple of days. The center of circulation forecast to move into the Gulf of Mexico. It actually could uh, pick up some winds and days. The center of circulation forecast to move into the Gulf of Mexico. It actually could uh, pick up some winds and bring in more moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. We're just hoping it moves a little bit more eastward and gives Houston a break. Although I want to make mention that our folks west of Houston, north of Houston, east of Houston, also getting tremendous flooding and tremendous numbers. Uh, so we're watching you as well. Uh, but you can see the heaviest rain band right now just east of Houston. So they're getting a bit of a break. Um, not for long, though. Unfortunately, we have more rain in the forecast. The threat for tornadoes as well. A tornado warned storm earlier on just around the Beaumont area right here south of Beaumont. So we see these tornadoes, weak tornadoes, but still the potential for damage and we have seen over you know dozens of reports of tornadoes unfortunately and people are you know usually I tell people to go into your basement to the lowest portion of your home but right now the flooding is the biggest threat you have to go to the highest portion of your home so uh, you know I, I, there's no words for this situation unfortunately ladies it, it boggles the mind I just mm -hmm. hope for the safety of everyone and hopefully the message will get across that we still have to prepare for days of rain mm -hmm. in this area and I can't imagine being on top of your roof and having absolutely nowhere else to go if you were yeah. in like a two or three story home thinking okay I've got a couple of stories now you're on a roof you have nowhere to go yeah nowhere else it's right. a tragedy unfolding mm -hmm. thank you Janice well, disturbing images from inside the disaster zone. Look at this, showing helpless nursing home patients trapped in dirty, waist-deep water. Yeah, this was an amazing story. Several coming out. Uh, Casey Stiegel joins us now with our live team coverage, live in Dickinson, Texas, with details on this dramatic rescue. Casey, tell us the story behind it. Ladies, just incredible. Uh, Dickinson, Texas, first of all, is back here. This is the exit off of the interstate to get to it and it is flooded out. It's the spot yesterday where we saw boat after boat after boat being launched into the floodwaters to carry out these rescues. My photojournalist, Jeremy Pollard, got on one of those rescue boats. We wanna show you some video because you still can't even get into Dickinson, uh, at least from Interstate 45, by car. It's only by boat. And people were just sitting there waiting to be picked up from all of these volunteers who heard the calls for help across a man who was just sitting on the roof of his truck and people that were just waiting for anyone to come by and pull them to safety and pull them to dry land. So these have been numerous search and rescue operations going on and we started to see images on social media of a nursing home here in Dickinson and people were just heartbroken by it. They, uh, it, We saw elderly patients sitting in water and it went viral and it didn't take long before help to arrive. Listen. We were having trouble getting in touch with anybody who would answer a phone call for rescue. We decided to go ahead and tweet it just because we thought at least then we could get someone's attention. It's frightening. I mean, imagine your mom a few states away, you know, with all of these residents and the poor residents. I mean, it's just so heartbreaking to see them. The power of social media. Just think if we had Twitter or something like that during Hurricane Katrina. I know there are a lot of parallels being made and uh, it is a incredible sense of urgency out here. But right now, curfews in effect throughout most of the areas. So it's quiet now, but you bet at the first start of sun and the first break of dawn, we're gonna have lots of people out here doing it all over again. Well, Casey, Ladies. just to give everybody an update, all those patients are okay, those elderly patients that were rescued? And how many did they have? Those nursing homes have uh, a lot of yeah. patients. I apologize for that. I thought that uh, was included there. The woman uh, that you heard from was one of the, the uh, daughters of one of those ladies at right. the home. And we are happy to report that they were all successfully evacuated and uh, safe and sound. Don't have an exact number of how mm -hmm. many were there, but everyone has been accounted for, we understand, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, they, they are safe this morning. God bless them. They Thanks. have a lot of equipment that yeah. need to go with them too, some oxygen. And, wow. Thanks Thank to the power you. of social media though, like yeah. you said.
Well, Governor uh, Greg Abbott, meantime, warning the most brutal storm to hit Texas. It's not over yet. The meteorologist also saying it days of drenching downpours packed with historic flooding still ahead. Water already taking a toll on roads opening this massive sinkhole. That's where Rob Schmidt picks up our team coverage this morning live in Rosenberg, Texas. Rob. Yeah, guys, getting soaked uh, again. These bands keep coming through. It'll be dry. Now it's raining again. And look at the power of water behind me. It really illustrates it perfectly. Uh, just an incredible vision to see uh, this hole open up. This was a little stream that went underneath this roadway. And uh, the power of all that water just uh, exposed it, uh, exposed the sinkhole. And then the road came down with it. Just an incredible image. And, uh, you know, as we're seeing all this, we're seeing all of this rain, which uh, was predicted. Uh, you know, the National Weather Service, they made some great calls. Our people at Fox News made some great calls calls on how much water we'd get. Now there's criticism of uh, the Houston representatives and, uh, you know, the leaders here for not evacuating. We're seeing all these people getting in these situations have to be rescued. Uh, here is the governor talking a little bit about that. We moved beyond uh, whether or not there should have been an evacuation or not. And we are at the stage where we just need to respond uh, to the emergencies and necessities uh, the people of Houston have. But again, it's not just people around Houston. Well, yeah, and it's it's not. It, it, the, the problem is widespread. And when you go down to where we first started uh, this whole endeavor in Rockport and uh, Port Aransas areas like that, Aransas Pass, they were evacuated. And rightfully so, people came back to their homes decimated. That same call wasn't made here in Houston. And you're seeing the result of all these rescues having to be made. So uh, we're going to have to wait and see uh, what happens with the local leaders here and how they're going to be held accountable for that uh, if they should be. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Yeah, Port Aransas and Rockport devastated. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you much. Yep. Well, the hurricane also causing some chaos out on the high seas. 20,000 people are stranded on cruise ships. They're unable to dock in flood ravaged Galveston, Texas. Some of those ships have been rerouted to New Orleans to replenish the supplies and let some of the passengers off. Another ship headed off to Miami. Officials hope to reopen the port of Galveston tomorrow. I heard some of those people can't get off till Friday. Mm. Can you imagine, Heather? And this uh, powerful photo showing a little boy doing all he can to stay dry as water creeps into his house in Dickinson, Texas. The little guy clutching to his stuffed animal monkey while sitting on a counter in the kitchen. Brown, muddy water you see there halfway up the cabinets. Let's hope they ended up okay. Yeah. Well, sending more help uh, from 1,000 miles away, New York City police officers and firefighters are headed to Houston to assist in the hurricane relief and rescues. 120 first responders specially trained to help in catastrophic events, packing up rescue supplies, food, tools, and boats. They could be stationed in Texas for up to three weeks. Surreal before and after photo showing just how devastating the flooding has become. In this one here on your left, you can see Memorial Parkway in Houston. This is what it looked like on Saturday. The photo on the right is the same parkway just one day later, 24 hours. And this one showing severe highways in a river before the storm there. That river turning the entire area into a lake as the water rises. You would that's, never even guess there's no, a road there. That's why they need more boats to get people out. Well, the time now is 12 minutes after the top. closed due to Harvey's floodwaters. What that means for you coming up. And thousands forced to flee their homes as Texas grapples with catastrophic flooding. We've been talking about it all morning long. How the White House is kicking into high gear to see the state through the crisis. We're live in Houston next. Welcome back to Fox and Friends. First, President Trump heading to Texas tomorrow to get a firsthand look at the catastrophic flooding, the destruction left behind by Hurricane Harvey. And we're now learning it could take years for Texas to recover. Doug Lazader continues our team coverage live from Houston this morning. Doug. Hey, good morning. And we are in downtown Houston. And, and look at the floodwaters behind me. Now, believe it or not, we've seen these waters drop just ever so slightly this morning. But that's going to change the course of the day, most likely, because uh, this storm is moving so slowly. It's just, just going to keep on a dumping rain in this area. Uh, the, tech, the governor of Texas has mobilized the National Guard to uh, assist in rescue efforts and just kind of dealing with the aftermath of this storm. But uh, even he acknowledges the massive challenges that lie ahead. 
We're measuring rain these days, not in inches, but in feet. Uh, and we are prepared to deal with that in multiple ways. We're deploying boats and helicopters uh, to be involved in swift water rescues. Uh, and that will be not just in the Houston and Harris County area, uh, but that will be arrayed all across East Texas where you can see all that heavy flooding. Yeah, but of course, there's a huge focus on Houston because it is a massive population center. And this is going to take a while. And you hear the governor there talking about mobilizing air resources and water resources. Well, they've also called on volunteers uh, to get out to try to get into some of these floodwaters to uh, rescue people. So this is going to be a long term effort. Uh, resources being mobilized at the state level, the federal level as well. Uh, FEMA has been uh, deploying resources. Uh, and of course, we're preparing uh, for the visit of uh, President Trump here. Uh, tomorrow and his concern was that it would take away uh, from the flood response so they're trying to make sure that this is done with the least impact possible so back to you guys all right doug luzader live for us thank you doug thank you so much and now to some other stories making headlines this morning president trump is bringing back surplus military equipment to local police departments the program which supplies cops with armored vehicles grenades launchers and high caliber weapons was disbanded by the obama administration attorney general jeff sessions will announce the policy change at the fraternal order of police conference in nashville today well, the bodies of all 10 missing sailors are now recovered following the USS John McCain's deadly collision in the South China Sea. U.S. Navy and Marine Corps divers recovering their remains from the ship's flooded compartments. Last week, the ship slammed into an oil tanker, was off the coast of Singapore. This is the Navy's fourth major incident in the region this year. A massive 10-day protest march from Washington, D.C. kicks off from Charlottesville this morning. The goal? Well, to get President Trump out of office. It's all in response to the deadly clashes in Virginia earlier this month. This after a town hall in Charlottesville quickly turns heated. Listen. Not a single person here is innocent of having some kind of hate. Any person on this planet can get their DNA checked. You will have African ancestry. So this whole white supremacist, this whole you're so like superior to me, it's a fallacy. Very heated. Those two men shouting at each other after they finished speaking. They had to be broken up by people in the crowd, we're told. Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe also sending a new warning. If you committed violence in Charlottesville, he says we will find you and arrest you. Not mincing words. Well, the time now is about 20 minutes after the top of the hour. You know, flood victims forced to pay $100 for a case of water. It's time of crisis. You go buy a bottle of water and you're going to sit and you sell it this high. It is wrong, wrong, wrong. And the Texas Attorney General is now saying enough is enough. His message for the people who are uh, price gouging. And plus thousands of people left without a roof over their head. How can you help the victims of Hurricane Harvey right now? This well, Fox Business Alert for you now. Exxon shutting down a major Houston area refinery in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. Tracy Carrasco from our sister network, Fox Business, here with how this will impact the price of oil and gas prices as we approach a holiday weekend. Tracy. Good morning, ladies. Yes, Exxon closed its Baytown refinery located on the Houston Ship Channel when floodwaters paralyzed the area. The plant is the second largest refinery in the country, processing as much as 560,000 barrels of oil a day and feeding fuel into pipelines and barges that move it across the southeastern U.S. and up the East Coast. Harvey's projected path as of Sunday night included an even bigger refinery in Port Arthur, Texas, that produces 600,000 barrels of fuel a day. We're watching that one. Harvey knocked out almost 15 percent of U.S. refinery capacity. It's out of commission, which threatens to boost fuel prices across the country. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the, across the state of Texas, mm -hmm. it, they they produce about six billion um, uh, barrels of oil a day. Yeah. So it's definitely. It takes a while to get things. them back up and running. Yes, yes so. exactly. Speaking of back up and running, flights being impacted. Both airports in Houston shut down. Yeah, we're talking some 5,000 flights affected. Flights have been grounded at both of Houston's busy airports, Bush Intercontinental and Hobby, disrupting airline schedules all weekend. Nationwide, airlines had grounded nearly 1,800 flights as of late 
Sunday night. Many flights, though, preemptively canceled sometime on Saturday. Already more than 1,400 cancellations extended into today and another 450 into tomorrow. All big U.S. airlines are waiving change fees for travelers ticketed to fly through the region. And I know we've been getting a lot of emails and uh, tweets, everything, asking how can we help the victims? This is the best part about Americans. They want to help. Yeah, this is the big thing for people not in the area. So here are some things that you can do to help the victims of Hurricane Harvey. No, if you are in the area, you could volunteer at one of the shelters for those displaced. Uh, both the American Red Cross and Salvation Army are ac accepting volunteers. Also, you could donate cash. Both the Red Cross and Salvation Army have set up ways to donate on their websites. And if you do... Uh, give money, make sure it's through a trusted source. Another big thing, donate blood. Uh, blood banks in Texas have already said they're desperate for blood donations. They said that ahead of the storm, so. Yeah, so redcross.org and 1-800-HELP-NOW. Yes. And those diapers, something you don't think about, but Absolutely. they don't provide diapers, so they yeah. need you to help provide those diapers. All right, thank you, Tracy. Thanks. I appreciate it. The time is now about 25 after the hour. Braving the storm, the police officer who stopped at nothing to save an American flag from Harvey. And no sign of relief in sight for Texas. Senior meteorologist Janice Dean tracking more rain as our live Fox News team coverage continues up next. Alert more danger on the way for Texas. Millions waking up to another scene of epic flooding as thousands of state and National Guard service members. Hurricane Harvey now a tropical storm bringing catastrophic flooding to Houston with no signs of relief in sight. You're watching Fox and Friends first on this Monday. President Trump now preparing to head directly into the disaster zone. And we have live Fox News team coverage. And we begin with Griff Jenkins on the ground in Houston, the epicenter of the crisis. Uh, Griff, we've been using this word catastrophic. Is that fitting? I don't think Griff can hear us. Griff, can you hear us? Okay, while we work that out with Hi Griff. guys, I'm not sure you can hear me, but let me just tell you that the situation here in Houston has gone from horrible to worse. As the sun comes up or light comes up here, I should say, the residents in the southwest neighborhood are going to be subjected to artificial flooding because the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has made the decision to release water from reservoirs that feed into the Buffalo Bayou that go right by this neighborhood and flows southwest as you can see we are expecting already record amount of flooding to continue we are at knee deep but if i go just a few blocks it will be waist deep here and the residents here may not even know that they have made the decision the harris county flood control putting out a statement that residents in this neighborhood is a new neighborhood that may see 15 20 feet and have to be rescued they're being told to take precautionary measures and it is unbelievable to imagine what measures they could take because this city is absolutely paralyzed. The mayor has defended his decision not to evacuate mandatory some neighborhoods, but one wonders now, should he have maybe made that decision because these neighborhoods, which were not, it's bad, but they are not life-threatening, are going to be in an entirely different situation in the coming hours as the flood waters come from nature and now come from the decision to sacrifice some neighborhoods to keep from dams breaking and literally destroying an already flooded downtown Houston. No one knew which direction it was going to go. So it's kind of difficult to send people away from danger when you don't know where the danger is. The decision that we made was a smart one. It was in the best, in best interest of Houstonians. It uh, was the right decision in terms of their safety. In the real story here, the thousands of rescues yesterday, many of them from volunteers who use their boats in very difficult situations. As you can see, it's not raining hard now, but we're expecting a lot more in historic flooding uh, already hitting this city. And now the decision of what to do with residents in new neighborhoods that are facing artificial flooding coming already in the hours of this morning. Guys. Yeah, truly amazing Thank and you. devastating. Thank that you. phrase, artificial yeah. flooding, mm -hmm. not what you want to hear right now when you're getting all of this yeah. natural flooding. And the video, if people don't realize that you were just looking at it, the woman standing there waving for help, she was on her rooftop. 
So that's how high the water is over there, right. some of those areas. Well, let's check in with Janice Dean. There it is right there. That's a rooftop. Checking in with Janice Dean to see how much additional water, not the artificial right. water, mm -hmm. the artificial flooding that we're going to get. Unfortunately, ladies, in some cases, we're going to see an additional two feet of rainfall on top of the already two feet that we have seen in parts of southeast Texas. There's the 48 hour loop and you can see within the last 48 hours, that's where we had those epic rainfall totals. Uh, the fact that this system is stalled out and actually is going to the center of the storm is going to move in towards the Gulf of Mexico is something we're going to have to monitor because that means the potential for more heavy rainfall across southeast Texas moving into Louisiana. The tornado threat ongoing uh, throughout the morning, and we've had tornado watches and warnings throughout the duration of the storm uh, since it made landfall last week, Thursday, Friday. So uh, no warnings just yet, but we did have a warning earlier in Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont, by the way, over two feet of rainfall. So not just the Houston area, but surrounding areas across southeast Texas getting epic amounts of rain. There's your future radar. And again, we think the center of circulation moving uh, towards the Gulf of Mexico, over the Gulf of Mexico, it actually could strengthen a little bit. Uh, the winds won't be an issue. It's going to be the additional rainfall on top of historic rainfall that they've already received. So 18 to 24 inches, it is hard to imagine that much more rain uh, heading into Thursday. And you can see we've been into this blocking pattern, ladies, and that's why this system has not moved by Thursday, Friday, hoping it budges a little bit towards the northeast. But this flooding is going to last well after Harvey leaves and exits, exits. and unfortunately, we're going to be dealing with uh, the fallout for years, if not decades, um, in the Houston, Texas area. Yeah. And it came so quickly. There was one woman we spoke with yesterday uh, in one of the neighborhoods. She said that at 2 a.m., it was up to her ankles on the bottom floor of her house, two stories. And then by 5 a.m., it was up to her chest in the attic. So rose very quickly. It, it's, it's tragic what's happening right now. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you, Janice. Well, Tropical Storm Harvey unleashing 9 trillion gallons of water on Texas so far, but the worst is yet to come. Yeah, Governor Greg Abbott warning days of catastrophic flooding still ahead. Rob Schmidt is live for us in Rosenberg, Texas, where roads are already giving out. Rob? Yeah, and this and this this town is going to be shut down this week, I believe. Houston and surrounding areas, it's it's a mess. And you can see behind me just what we're talking about. If we pan over here, you can see the hole behind me. You can see, look at the guardrail, just go right down into it. Uh, incredible. The power of water. This was a stream that went underneath uh, this part of the roadway. And uh, when all that water came running through, it just flushed the entire roadway off. I mean, it's just really incredible to see. As we go into more video, we went on a little adventure yesterday into, into downtown trying to see what we could find. And uh, we certainly found that we ran into an issue where we couldn't go any further, uh, which is what a lot of people are running into. You, you get into this flooding water. We got in about three feet of water and we we're thinking we're going to flood out the car. We saw cars flooded out. Some people did make it through with uh, some jacked up trucks, but uh, the amount of water is incredible. And they're telling people don't go through that standing water. Here is exactly why you're going to see traffic cam video here uh, showing a rescue. This was a truck going down the I-10. Um, tried to get through some water that thought it wasn't too deep and look what happens to the point where if those uh, if that rescue effort hadn't gone underway and if those heroes hadn't come in the guy would have drowned right there in his truck or tried to get out and drown in the water after that so i mean it's it's the real deal it's scary stuff and you need to listen when they tell you not to mess around with it because they're not just trying to be overly careful here is the governor talking about just how widespread uh this problem is in south texas with there's basically a triangle of ongoing rain. Uh, this is one tip of which would be the Corpus Christi area up to Travis County, uh, over to Chambers County, and then back to Corpus Christi. Parts of those regions will continue to receive incredibly heavy rain that will lead to even more flooding and more danger for Texans. And you've been hearing Janice all morning. I mean, when you hear a meteorologist that's been doing this for quite a while uh, say that they've never seen anything like this, you know this is the real deal. I mean, this is not being inflated. This is a bad, bad storm. Amount of water that uh, most places in the world will never see. It's incredible. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Well, Robin, when you think about it, that water sitting on the road for so long at any time, like you saw right behind there in your live shot, that road...
Our country's fourth largest city shut down. Residents in crisis. Houston coping with a disaster of epic proportions. It's sad, man. A lot of, a lot of devastation. I don't think the city was very prepared for it. It's pretty disappointing. So we taking our personal stuff out of here. You know, doing what we got to do. That's what firemen do. Governor, you got your hands full. What's your priority at this hour? Protecting lives. There's a lot of people left behind that, that would like to get rescued. We know water is coming more tonight and over the next couple of days, and we didn't want to be there when it was rising even higher. 15 elderly residents sitting in waist and shoulder deep water inside the assisted living facility. They got in touch with the National Guard, which sent a helicopter rescuing all 15 residents. President Trump will travel to Texas on Tuesday. I give FEMA a grade of A plus all the way from the president down. What does this mean for the rest of the country in terms of the economy? We're seeing the price of gas at the pump go up. It's gone up five to 10 cents. Hopefully within a month, we level back out. Oh, you want to see the sweetest sight that we have seen since we arrived in Houston. I know it's dark, but take a look. Can you see it? It is blacktop. We have not seen enough blacktop since we arrived in Houston. All right, uh, there you go. That brings us up to the minute. It's a Fox News alert time because Tropical Storm Harvey delivering another major blow to the nation's fourth largest city. While you were sleeping, perhaps, more mandatory evacuation orders put in effect as the Army Corps of Engineers making an emergency move to open the dams, flooding more neighborhoods in order to protect the downtown area. All this after days of drenching downpours and catastrophic flooding and thousands upon thousands of dramatic rescues. At least five deaths being reported at this hour as the governor there in Texas, Greg Abbott, warns the worst is yet to come. With still more rain in the forecast that Janice is going to talk to us about. Right, and uh, we'll bring you up to the date what's happening on the ground uh, as well as what's happening uh, with the forecast. But first, let's go to Griff Jenkins, who's been uh, doing some sensational work uh, in the eye of the storm. Uh, Griff, I can see it is still raining. It is. It's a disaster situation here, as uh, we've all seen over the weekend, and it's about to get even worse, man-made worse, when artificial flooding comes in the form of the water being released from those dams, uh, from those reservoirs to keep the dams from breaking and absolutely wiping out downtown Houston. Let me just paint the picture for you. This is the one of the southwest neighborhoods that was told overnight from the Harris County flood control folks that they will be released leasing water from the reservoir to come down the bayous that come past this neighborhood and it is definitely going to flood and the residents should remain alert and take precautionary me uh, measures but here's the thing guys as light begins to come out this morning, it is going to be a situation of utter chaos because the residents, if they remained, have been told for the last few days to stay put, don't go out, don't get in your cars. Well, guess what? They can't go anywhere. Look at these cars. Look how deep this is out here. So on top of what is expected to be even more epic historic flooding, we saw the thousands of rescues that happened literally on this block about that way where houses are under 15, 20 feet in this southwest neighborhood, uh, you are going to have water from what is the uh, Buffalo Bayou that flows southwest out away from Houston. That's why I was created to keep the city from flooding down to the Houston Ship Channel. And all of that water is going to start coming in the form of inches and probably feet in the next few hours on top of what Mother Nature is going to bring. And so this is truly a situation that has been devastating all weekend and is about to get worse some of the neighbors here are going to make a tough decision because they're going to feel like sacrificial lambs and here's the deal many of them don't have power may not have a television or a phone to look at the information they may not even know that the officials have told them that this new problem is coming their way it's unbelievable guys so, wait a second griff are they still asking for boats and have there been rescues going on all night i understand about a thousand people already been saved do they still need people to grab their, uh, you know, grab their kayak, their canoe, their motorboat and help? 
Absolutely. You know, the story here, uh, one of the most important stories is of volunteers. We went out with one of the volunteers. We'll bring that to you a little later, uh, who took John boats to go out and to rescue people. There weren't a few people. When they say search and rescue, you don't have to search hard. We went out. There are not hundreds, but thousands of people on rooftops because they were told to go there looking for help. But here's the problem. These volunteers, they're operating in little John boats. When it rains, the way it's been raining, those John boats can't hold water. They've got to get under underpasses. They've got to take uh, uh, cover. And on top of that, they have hazards. When you're under 10, 15 feet of water, the hazards are submerged cars. It takes about an hour of heavy rainfall and now artificial water that's coming into this neighborhood. It's guaranteed that car will be underwater and John boats, volunteers have to make sure they don't hit structures like that and cause an even bigger problem. Yeah, that is why a yeah, situation likely chaos is about to play out. All right, yeah. Griff, we'll check in with you in a little while. We also have a story. Griff did some of these water rescues in one of those small boats, and we're going to play that story coming up. So all this incredible. really does beg the question, why wasn't Houston evacuated? We knew that this was coming, maybe not 100% to the degree that we're seeing right now, but why wasn't well, the, the city mayor is under a lot of fire right. for that, and he says he doesn't have any regrets. He's pleased with the way everything uh, panned out. He said it's so hard to evacuate 6.5 million people. Listen to what he said. This is Mayor Sylvester Turner. To try to put forth some sort of evacuation in a, in a couple of days uh, was a little, I mean, the logistics would have been crazy. In the city of Houston, there are 2.3 million people. When you combine mm -hmm. that with Harris County, you're talking about 6.5 million people. Uh, where are they going? The decision that we made was a smart one. It was in the best in best interest of Houstonians. Well, I'll keep in mind, too, is that what he's thinking about is the, the 60 people that died leaving uh, at Trump, supposedly ahead of Hurricane Rita a few years back. He saw how everyone left at the same time. The roadways got jammed. They couldn't move. And a lot of people drowned because these uh, the roads got swamped. He didn't want to see that. You know, logic would bring you. I've never moved two million people anywhere, but you wonder if a phased evacuation would have been more effective. You bring up a good point, Brian, because when I, I remember in 1999, there was Hurricane Floyd that hit South Carolina. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to for all these mayors to come together or the governors to talk to one another and decide how they've done it in the past. That governor at the time was under so much fire because the roads were at standstill. People were running out of gas. No one had a place to go to the restroom. So then they fixed the problem. They did what you were suggesting, Brian. They released people the next time there was a hurricane in zones. So depending on your neighborhood, you got to leave first, second, third. It made traffic flow. They took all of the all the highways that were going um, into Charleston. They made all those highways, those lanes leaving Charleston. So the highways that might have been two lanes were now four lanes leaving the area. So they need to talk to other states to find out how to, going forward, every state, right. every governor watching needs to talk to other states that have been through this in case it happens to you going forward. Yeah, the communication between the federal government and the governor has been strong. Uh, between the governor and mayor, they've been watching each other's back, but they do have somewhat of a different message. You know, Greg Abbott said, hey, if you're in a low-lying area, Corpus Christi or Houston, maybe even some of the other areas, you need to strongly consider evacuating. He said he that on Friday. Right. And so Governor is on air saying don't. And there are a number of residents and rescue crews are saying that the city just wasn't ready. Uh, we're going to toss it on now to Janice Dean. Janice, you got us ready for this. And I'd like to say that you got the city of Houston and that whole area in Texas mm -hmm. as ready as possible with the information that you are receiving. What is the latest right now? Listen, I just want to add this. How on earth do you prepare for 50 inches of rain? Right. Really? Right. I, this will be debated for years to come. Uh, as far as the forecast goes, the National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, once we knew where the storm was going, on point, they knew that we were going to get historic life-threatening catastrophic floods. I mean, we couldn't believe the numbers seeing 50 inches of rainfall, and it's happening. So the National Hurricane Center did excellent work when it, it comes to forecasting. We did the best that we possibly could with the information that we had. Uh, but look at the, the rainfall totals, over you know 27 inches already. The problem is we're going to get more, more rainfall. Typically with these systems, sometimes a cold front will move through. Uh, you know, 
The jet stream will help things along not happening. We have nothing to steer this, and that's why we've got the potential for more heavy rain. The good news is right now the heaviest rain band has moved east of the Houston area, but the area of low pressure, the center of the system, is forecast to move back into the Gulf of Mexico. So is the potential for the storm to strengthen, perhaps bumping up the winds. The winds are not going to be the problem. It's going to be the rainfall and the threat of tornadoes, by the way, because we had dozens of reports of tornadoes with these landfalling systems. We see the potential for weak tornadoes, Nonetheless, with the rain, we could potentially see rain wrap tornadoes. So if you have your no weather radio, you need to, to keep it on. The good news is uh, the threat for tornadoes shifts a little bit more eastward. So Houston, you're not out of the woods yet, but things are going to improve in terms of severe storms, including tornadoes. Here's one of the reliable forecast models that was spot on with the rainfall forecast. You can see the area of low pressure moving into the Gulf of Mexico and potentially moving up towards Houston and Galveston again. And that's why we're seeing the potential for upwards of 18 to 24 more inches. 50 inches from a tropical system has never happened in U.S. history. Wow. Uh, Unreal. Thanks, Janice. You know, I'm pretty amazed, too, how uh, there's something about Texas, not to put down any other state. They like to take things in their own hands. I could not believe how quickly they're mobilized. They don't blame. They spring into action. And that's why you see so many people uh, helping other people and not looking to get a pat on the back. Yeah, we're, we're going to interview Reverend Franklin Graham coming up. He is he has started this organization called Samaritan's Purse. You've probably right. heard of it. It's a great organization. They've already rallied the troops. They've sent tractor trailers into Texas already. They're full of supplies like tools and um, emergency equipment, that kind of thing, to help people rebuild. So if you want to give money to an organization, many people are asking how I can help. That's a terrific organization. It's Christian-based, and they just share so much love with the families that are in trouble. Yeah, just so beautiful to see humanity coming together. Meantime, Tropical Storm Heart and obviously heavy winds in certain areas leaving behind vast devastation. All right, get this. You got more than 9 trillion gallons of water. It's fallen already on Texas, but there's still more on the way. Rob Schmidt picks up our team coverage. He's live in Rosenberg, Texas, where roads are already giving out. Hey, Rob. Uh, yeah, and this one, hey, guys, uh, is a perfect example. This illustrates exactly how much water has come through. Your, so this is like a little tributary stream that runs underneath this roadway. Look behind me here. Uh, it just completely washed this entire thing out. It's just crazy to see. Uh, and, of course, we lose the light right in the middle of the live shot. There's live TV for you. But uh, And there it goes again. Uh, but you can just see just a total washout, just amazing to see what water can do when it runs through uh and and the governor talking about you know it, it this is plain and simple you know th this is not an over exaggeration of the problem this is insane the amount of water that they're getting here you do not need to be out in this you don't need to be trying to drive through uh standing water don't do anything like that because the resources are stretched to the max right now and if you do you might not get saved at this point because there's so many emergencies happening let's listen to the governor we want to emphasize the importance uh, when there is heavy rainfall, when there is flooding, the importance of staying off the road. Uh, if you drive into water, you're taking your life into your own hands. And you certainly are. And here's a look at a traffic camera. This happened last night. An incredible story. This truck overcome by the water. And we got to see on live television a local station's traffic cam showing a rescue, saving a man's life. Imagine if nobody was there. The guy would end up drowning in his truck. It's just incredible to see. As you move down south where the, where the storm came ashore, Rockport, Port Lavaca. I mean, there's a couple towns down in there, Aransas Pass, uh, where it just got eviscerated by this storm. You can see the video. The winds, 130 miles an hour, ripped everything apart guys this has been a bad storm and it continues to get worse right uh, all right uh, thanks Rob we'll check in with you again Rob's been there all weekend but at 13 yeah. minutes after the hour uh, we also know too the president's going to be coming down there on Tuesday and so far the governor and the communications with everybody else has been really strong yeah there's also going to be a press conference in about an hour and 15 minutes we'll be covering that well the images of course are heartbreaking people stranded in nursing homes waist deep in dirty water look at that picture we're live on the ground as new word of rescue is coming in straight ahead and no question this is a proud American the police officer who braved the storm to save an American flag that's coming up when we come back It's like nothing. Fox News alert now. Thousands across Texas in need of rescue from catastrophic flooding from Hurricane Harvey. Now, 
It's a tropical storm, but there is no relief in sight, nor does it mean this thing is let up at all, let alone the tornadoes that are scheduled. President Trump is now preparing to head directly into the disaster zone tomorrow. Joining us now to discuss the president's trip and more is GOP Congressman Blake Farenfold. Uh, Congressman, thanks for joining us. How do you feel about the Good president morning, coming tomorrow? Are you concerned about the logistics? Well, I think we're going to be able to pull it off. Corpus Christi, where I am now, is uh, starting to recover from the storm, but we've got a lot of areas uh, just around us, Port Aransas and Rockport, uh, that are in pretty bad shape. But I think we'll be able to handle the president here in uh, Corpus Christi, and the president's team has indicated they don't want to get in the way uh, but uh, the president wants to get a look firsthand at what's going on down here. Well, uh, meanwhile, he, uh, he tweeted this out. He said, great coordination between agencies at all levels of government. Continuing rains and flash flooding are being dealt with uh, and rescues are taking place. The University of Georgia climate expert said yesterday, he's also a NASA scientist, that this may be the worst flooding in our nation's history. Is there, knowing that, is there any, and knowing that the game plan can be thrown out, uh, thrown, ripped up then, how do you handle what's straight ahead? Well, you just keep on working. Texans are a resilient bunch. You've seen videos all morning of people helping people. We had that uh, down here with the windstorm uh, that was happening, and we're seeing it in Houston with the associated flooding. We are a resilient bunch down here. We're committed to helping our neighbors. So General Andre was just on, and he was saying, you know, he played such a vital role with Katrina. He said he would like to see more National Guards mobilized. What numbers are you at? What are you asking for from maybe other states? Well, right now the state is coordinating that with FEMA. We have natural, uh, National Guard on the ground here. Uh, Port Aransas, Texas, just right across the bay from Corpus Christi, was just devastated. We've got National Guard there. They're not even letting uh, people in to check their property unless that's their primary residence. Port Aransas is a vacation town. Lots of folks have second homes down there, and it's just not even safe there. The National Guard's uh, doing doing the work uh, right on the streets in, uh, in Port Aransas and other areas. Right now in Houston, with all the rain, uh, you're going to need the National Guard potentially in to help after the fact. But right now, in the middle of the downpour, there's not a lot anybody can do. Right. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Congressman. Uh, you guys got to stay coordinated so when people go to help, they know where to go. I know people just in the New York area, 120 uh, officers active and retired are heading your direction. Hopefully they'll get some coaching so they'll be the most effective. Congressman, thanks so much. Now, it's, listen, it's a great country, and it, we're glad to have all the help we can get. Thank you, sir. Coming up straight ahead, our next guest managed to get out before the storm hit, but the rest of her family still in the disaster zone. Did they get enough warning? And liberal extremists taking over UC Berkeley once again, inciting new violence at the so-called anti-hate rally. Explain that. What? Back with some quick headlines on this Monday. Two big protests descending on Washington this morning. Al Sharpton leading the 1,000 ministers march for justice on the National Mall. And a 10-day march to Washington kicks off in Charlottesville in response to the deadly clashes in Virginia earlier this month. This after a town hall there quickly turns heated. Watch. Not a single person here is innocent of having some kind of hate. Any person on this planet can get their DNA checked you will have African ancestry. So this whole white supremacist, this whole, you're so like superior to me, it's a fallacy. Those two men shouting at each other after they finished speaking. They actually had to be broken up by people in the crowd. And President Trump is providing major backup for our police officers on the front lines of those protests. He's reinstating a program that supplies local police departments with surplus military equipment, including armored vehicles, grenade launchers, and high caliber weapons. Attorney General Sessions will announce the change later today. Ainsley. Thank you, Julian. This is a Fox News alert. Tropical Storm Harvey delivering another major blow to our nation's fourth largest city overnight. While you all were sleeping, more mandatory evacuation orders were put into effect. As the Army Corps of Engineers makes an emergency move to open up the dams, flooding even more of the neighborhoods in order to protect the downtown area. Take a look at downtown Houston before and look at it after. 
quite a difference. Those devastating floods overwhelm rescuers and forcing residents to their roofs, leading many to ask why a call to evacuate did not come sooner. Join us, joining us live now is Teslin Figaro. She and her 10-year-old daughter decided to leave their Houston house less than 24 hours before Harvey made landfall, but her family chose to stay. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Have you talked to your family? What are they going through right now? Yeah, you know, my main concern is, you know, I have an uncle, Uncle Daniel, who is uh, in critical condition, critical care uh, in the hospital at this moment. Uh, my aunt has been there, not able to leave, unable to shower. Uh, the nurses, the doctors are there stuck. Uh, they're stuck there until at least Tuesday. Uh, they wanted to do a procedure on him, but because of uh, the current condition, they didn't want to, uh, you know, take any type of chance or risk, uh, you know, with moving him on to his next phase of healing uh, because of this issue. So when I think about him, I think about my one-year-old nephew uh, who is in Richmond, Texas, who is also under a mandatory evacuation, mm -hmm. uh, first cousins who are all over the city. Um, it was really important for me to be here to say that, you know, Houston is doing all that it can uh, to work together. And I know there's a lot. Uh, I saw articles this morning about how people of color are uh, receiving a death sentence. And I think, you know, there is a time for a conversation about infrastructure and how, uh, you know, people of color uh, communities are affected. But right now, what's important to me is people to know that I live on the black side of town. My cousin lives on the white side of town. My mother-in-law lives on the Hispanic side of town. Uh, my, my nephew lives on the white side of town. So this is not about color at this mm -hmm. stage, at this time. This is about healing. This is about making sure that I have family that's alive, that I go home to. And I hope that this is not politicized um, from both sides of the aisle with making this about some type of racial tension. Uh, Houston is very segregated. It's a very segregated segregated city, very similar to Chicago. And I'm proud to see that Houston's are working together. And, and I, being a veteran, if I was at home, I would certainly be pitching in. But when I thought about me and my daughter, 10 years old, we're only 60 inches. So when you're talking about 50 inches of water, that didn't leave us much room to breathe. So it only made sense to me to get her out, um, out of harm's way. And then on next week, be about the business of bringing Houston back. Well, Teslin, you bring up so many great points, and you're right. We all need to come together as a nation and help one another, which it seems that is happening. Teslin, why did you decide? I know you mentioned your daughter, but have you talked to have you talked to the folks that live in your neighborhood? I want to find out what your house looks like now, what they're going through, and what the situation would have been if you had stayed. Oh, well, I mean, no question. Houston uh, floods after a drizzle. Mm -hmm. um, so no, it's no secret, you know, to those of who live in Houston who understand that it is a bayou city, um, that it is constantly flooding. And so when I woke up Friday morning and saw our, our mayor on national news, you know, I knew that it, it got real. You know, my daughter grabbed all of the things that were important to her, baby dolls, snacks and so forth. And we left, you know, my main street, Alameda Genoa on the south side of Houston was already flooding just from a simple drizzle. I reached out to my neighbors. I got their text, you know, got their cell numbers. We've been texting back and forth, and I'm assuming we don't have power at the moment where I live because I haven't heard from them. I've been texting, I've been calling, and I haven't received you know any feedback from them. Other family members are stuck in their homes. Water has receded all the way up um, to the door, and so we've just luckily have been able to you know maintain power, yeah. um, but but they have been you know at a standstill and un unable to move. Teslin, how do you feel about the mayor? I'm, I saw those images of your daughter, and as a mom too, I can relate to you. I would have gotten out immediately, but a lot of parents didn't. And the mayor, the mayor and the governor were saying different messages. The governor was telling people to leave. The mayor was not. There's a lot of backlash. People are frustrated. Even law enforcement and some of the firefighters seemed really tense when they were talking about this situation. Are you upset with him? Well, I, you know, I do understand that Houston is not a small town. You know, it's the fourth largest city in the country. So saying a mandatory evacuation is the same as telling New York, L.A. and Chicago, hey, mm -hmm. you know, get out now. You have 24 hours. So could there have been a voluntary evacuation or stressing, at least on the national forefront, national level? I don't watch a lot of local, local news because I'm in national media. So when I saw Houston mayor on Friday for the first time, I realized, you know, that it had gotten serious. So there, I guess, could have been a more coordinated effort uh, for people people to know. But then at the same time, there takes, you know, some personal responsibility in this as well. And it didn't take, you know, me to be a rocket scientist to know that I needed to go to higher ground. But at the same time, there are communities of poverty that do not have the resources. Yeah. Um, I'm blessed to get mm -hmm. out to be able to have, you know, a place to go and people don't have those resources. So could Dallas have stepped in earlier um, to say, you know, hey, we can provide shelter here. But where were people really going to go when it comes down to it? You couldn't go to San Antonio. You couldn't go to Austin. So I don't know if much more could 
could have been done that's already being done now. But what I will say is that I hope this is a time that we bring ourselves together and that we uh, come together in, as a nation to help each other get out this mess. Absolutely. We'll be keeping Uncle Daniel in our prayers. We wish you all the best. Keep thank us posted. You. All right. Thank, thank you. you. The images are heartbreaking. People stranded in nursing homes, waist deep, dirty water. Those patients, just some of the incredible rescue stories from all this disaster. We're live on the ground next. Six minutes before the top of the hour, we're back with the Vox News Alert. Rescues underway in Dickinson, Texas, just one of the several cities battling massive floodwaters. Casey Stiegel live for us in Dickinson, Texas with details on the dramatic rescues. Casey. Yeah, good morning to you. This is the exit ramp off of Interstate 45 headed north toward Houston. Uh, you can't even get past here because the water is so high and it is covering the roadway. You can only reach the area by boat. And one of our photojournalists, Jeremy Pollard, went out with rescuers yesterday through the neighborhoods and the streets of Dickinson, looking more like rivers as people were just waiting patiently to be plucked out of there to safety. We have a whole mix of people here. You've got search and rescue professional teams, the professional first responders, but you also have a whole lot of volunteers who are out here. They knew that people needed help, and so they hitched up their boats to their trucks, and they came out and started launching right off the side of the freeway and doing what they could to get people to safety. Dump trucks used, we saw that. People being carried out of here in dump trucks. They just didn't have enough vehicles to even transport the people to the shelters and to safety. We should point out that this is extremely dangerous as well because the first responders, there are a lot of risks out here for them. Jeremy told me that as they were going through that neighborhood on the boat, there were cars that were totally underwater. You could not even see them until sometimes it was too late. So we know that two Texas game wardens were injured yesterday. There was some type of a boat crash, the specifics not known, but we saw them carried out of here by ambulance and rushed to uh, Galveston, down on Galveston Island, the nearest major hospital. So people are out here risking their lives to save the lives of others. It's heartbreaking, but inspiring yet all at the same time. Casey, Back I know- I know you showed us those pictures of the nursing home, the La Vida mm -hmm. Bella nursing home. Can you tell the folks who are just waking up yeah. and aren't familiar with these pictures, the story here? Ainsley, this is incredible. Uh, this home, this nursing home is over in Dickinson. And a man ran up to me yesterday and said, we need help. We have to get these people help. And it was uh, a picture that you're seeing. And it was a, a video, uh, or I should say a picture that had gone viral. Someone posted it to Twitter and it got shared around nursing home patients sitting in floodwaters waiting to be rescued. They thought the Coast Guard was coming and uh, they then were airlifted out of there eventually after everyone started talking about it and sharing it. 15 people airlifted to safety. Everyone is doing okay this morning, but just incredible when you think about the number of people who have just been sitting in their homes. We talked to people who said that they were just on the second floor waiting to hear a boat come by and they were trying to uh, get their attention, flag them down mm. so they could be saved. You wonder where those aides Incredible. were that usually work nursing homes. I'm wondering what that story is. And Casey, it's obvious too, it's not raining. How long has that been the case? It's weird, it's on and off. In fact, right as I was about to come on, it stopped. I was standing here with an umbrella um, waiting to go on and it stopped. And we have these really intermittent periods here, very typical of these tropical systems. Sometimes it will come down so hard, it's blowing sideways and you can hardly see, and then it'll stop and it'll clear up. So it's just on again, off again. And uh, I know that we've got a potential rainfall um, of, of a whole lot more on the way. 
but I'm also seeing some stuff this morning that Janice Dean could maybe talk about that has the, the models shifting this a little bit to the east and some of the rainfall totals projected for Houston have been backed down a little bit from the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center. So that is encouraging news because the last thing these people need is any more water. That's for sure. That's really right. All right, with that in mind, Casey, thank you. We are going to go now to Janice Dean for the very latest. Uh, Janice, is there any sense that what Casey said could be coming to pass? Or, or is there any slight relief in sight? They're still going to get rain, uh, that is for sure, but it looks like the heaviest rainfall totals might be moving slightly eastward. Now, that's not to say that somebody isn't going to get another two feet of rain, but for the Houston area, you know, prayers out to the fact that maybe this storm moves a little bit more to the east, but we'll have to wait and see uh, over the next couple of hours, and we'll be able to give you a better gauge on that forecast. But just to show you how much rain they have gotten already, 27 inches in and around the Houston area, I just want to point out the National Weather Service had to add another color to their color table to demonstrate how much rainfall was predicted because they had never seen such rainfall totals. So uh, that is uh, in existence right now, north and east of the Houston area, over 27 inches with more rain in the forecast, uh, some projections saying upwards of two feet. So we're gonna have to see the exact position of where the center of circulation goes once it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, which is what we are forecasting. Still the potential for tornadoes east of the Houston area, again, which is great news. Uh, they don't need any more tornado warnings in and around Houston. Through tonight, moving towards Louisiana, coastal Louisiana. And there's the future radar. So not out of the woods yet. This area of low pressure moves into the Gulf of Mexico. We're still looking at the risk for heavy showers and thunderstorms, but fingers crossed, perhaps that moves a little bit more towards the east. It doesn't matter. I mean, the damage is done. Uh, whether they get 12 inches, 18 inches, it's still just a, a catastrophic situation. Right. Yeah. Awful. Janice. Thank you. All right, let's toss on and over to Jillian for some headlines. Jillian? That's right. Good morning. We are following other news at this hour, so let's get you caught up. Anarchy in Berkeley. Antifa protesters swarm at an anti-hate rally, turning it into chaos. More than 100 anarchists dressed in black assaulting people at the march, including Trump supporters. The protesters also chanting against cops. At least 13 people under arrest. Two people who were attacked had to be hospitalized, but will be okay. At least 30 illegal immigrants are busted, crossing the border in an underground tunnel. Border Patrol agents uncovering the hole in the ground, along with a ladder in San Diego. Officials say the tunnel started inside a building in nearby Tijuana, Mexico. Of those arrested 23 are Chinese nationals, seven are Mexicans. Take a look. This is what patriotism looks like. A Texas police officer braving Hurricane Harvey's wind and rain to save an American flag. This powerful photo showing Officer Jack McCarty grabbing Old Glory before winds could whip it away. This happened on Friday. The police department saying the officer would stop at nothing to honor and save her. Let's so look at your headlines on this Monday as mm. I send it back to you. We're resilient. Mm -hmm. We are resilient. Yep. Thanks, Jillian. All right, the storm shutting down the second largest oil refinery in our nation. As a nationwide spike in gas prices next, Stuart Varney weighs in. And rescue crews trying to keep up with the constant calls for help over in the Houston area. Our own Griff Jenkins rides along with crews as they rescue Harvey victims. It was about 5 a.m. One minute, everything was fine, but we could see the water was really high. The next minute, it's rushing in through every door we had. Yeah. Our country's fourth largest city shut down. Residents in crisis. Houston coping with a disaster of epic proportions. It's sad, man. A lot of, a lot of devastation. I don't think the city was very prepared for it. It's pretty disappointing. We've taken our personal stuff out of here. Doing what we got to do. That's what firemen do. Governor, you got your hands full. What's your priority at this hour? Protecting lives. There's a lot of people left behind that, that would like to get rescued. We know water is coming 
more tonight and over the next couple of days and we were, didn't want to be there when it was rising even higher. 15 elderly residents sitting in waist and shoulder deep water inside the assisted living facility. They got in touch with the National Guard, which sent a helicopter rescuing all 15 residents. President Trump will travel to Texas on Tuesday. I give FEMA a grade of A plus all the way from the president down. What does this mean for the rest of the country in terms of the economy? We're seeing the price of gas at the pump go up. It's gone up five to 10 cents. Hopefully within a month, we level back out. Oh, you want to see the sweetest sight that we have seen since we arrived in Houston. I know it's dark, but take a look. Can you see it? It is blacktop. We have not seen enough blacktop since we arrived in Houston. All right, uh, there you go. That brings us up to the minute. It's a Fox News alert time because Tropical Storm Harvey delivering another major blow to the nation's fourth largest city. While you were sleeping, perhaps, more mandatory evacuation orders put in effect as the Army Corps of Engineers making an emergency move to open the dams, flooding more neighborhoods in order to protect the downtown area. All this after days of drenching downpours and catastrophic flooding and thousands upon thousands of dramatic rescues. At least five deaths being reported at this hour as the governor there in Texas, Greg Abbott, warns the worst is yet to come. With still more rain in the forecast that Janice is going to talk to us about. Right, and uh, we'll bring you up to the date what's happening on the ground uh, as well as what's happening uh, with the forecast. But first, let's go to Griff Jenkins, who's been uh, doing some sensational work uh, in the eye of the storm. Uh, Griff, I can see it is still raining. It is. It's a disaster situation here, as we've all seen over the weekend, and it's about to get even worse, man-made worse, when artificial flooding comes in the form of the water being released from those dams, uh, from those reservoirs to keep the dams from breaking and absolutely wiping out downtown Houston. Let me just paint the picture for you. This is the, one of the southwest neighborhoods that was told overnight from the Harris County Flood Control folks that they will be released releasing water from the reservoir to come down the bayous that come past this neighborhood and it is definitely going to flood and the residents should remain alert and take precautionary me uh, measures but here's the thing guys as light begins to come out this morning, it is going to be a situation of utter chaos because the residents, if they remained, have been told for the last few days to stay put, don't go out, don't get in your cars. Well, guess what? They can't go anywhere. Look at these cars. Look how deep this is out here. So on top of what is expected to be even more epic historic flooding, we saw the thousands of rescues that happened literally on this block about that way where houses are under 15, 20 feet in this southwest neighborhood, uh, you are going to have water from what is the B Buffalo Bayou that flows southwest out away from Houston. That's why it was created to keep the city from flooding down to the Houston Ship Channel. And all of that water is going to start coming in the form of inches and probably feet in the next few hours on top of what Mother Nature is going to bring. And so this is truly a situation that has been devastating all weekend and is a about to get worse, some of the neighbors here are going to make a tough decision because they're going to feel like sacrificial lambs. And here's the deal. Many of them don't have power, may not have a television or a phone to look at the information. They may not even know that the officials have told them that this new problem is coming their way. It's unbelievable, guys. So, wait a second. Griff, are they still asking for boats and have there been rescues going on all night? I understand about a thousand people already been saved. Do they still need people to grab their, uh, you know, grab their kayak, their canoe, their motorboat and help? Absolutely. You know, the story here, uh, one of the most important stories is of volunteers. We went out with one of the volunteers. We'll bring that to you a little later, uh, who took John boats to go out and to rescue people. There weren't a few people. When they say search and rescue, you don't have to search hard. We went out. There are not hundreds, but thousands of people on rooftops because they were told to go there looking for help. But here's the problem. These volunteers, they're operating in little John boats. When it rains, 
the way it's been raining, those John boats can't hold water. They've got to get under underpasses. They've got to take uh, uh, cover. And on top of that, they have hazards. When you're under 10, 15 feet of water, the hazards are submerged cars. It takes about an hour of heavy rainfall and now artificial water that's coming into this neighborhood. It's guaranteed that car will be underwater and John boats, volunteers have to make sure they don't hit structures like that and cause an even bigger problem. Yeah, that is why a yeah, situation of likely chaos is about to play out. All right, yeah. Griff, we'll check in with you in a little while. We also have a story. Griff did some of these water rescues in one of those small boats, and we're going to play that story coming up. So That's all this incredible. really does beg the question, why wasn't Houston evacuated? We knew that this was coming, maybe not 100% to the degree that we're seeing right now, but why wasn't well, the, the city evacuated? The mayor is under a lot of fire right. for that, and he says he doesn't have any regrets. He's pleased with the way everything uh, panned out. He said it's so hard to evacuate 6.5 million people. Listen to what he said. This is Mayor Sylvester Turner. To try to put forth some sort of evacuation in a, in a couple of days uh, was a little, I mean, the logistics would have been crazy. In the city of Houston, there are 2.3 million people. When you combine that with Harris County, you're talking about 6.5 million people. Uh, where are they going? The decision that we made was a smart one. It was in the best in the best interest of Houstonians. Well, I'll keep in mind too is that what he's thinking about is the the 60 people that died leaving uh, at Tro supposedly ahead of Hurricane Rita a few years back. He saw how everyone left at the same time. The roadways got jammed. They couldn't move, and a lot of people drowned because these. Uh, the roads got swamped. He didn't want to see that. You know, logic would bring you. I've never moved two million people anywhere, but you wonder if a phased evacuation would have been more effective. You bring up a good point, Brian, because when I, I remember in 1999, there was Hurricane Floyd that hit South Carolina. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to for all these mayors to come together or the governors to talk to one another and decide how they've done it in the past. That governor at the time was under so much fire because the roads were at standstill. People were running out of gas. No one had a place to go to the restroom. So then they fixed the problem. They did what you were suggesting, Brian. They released people the next time there was a hurricane in zones. So depending on your neighborhood, you got to leave first, second, third. It made traffic flow. They took all of the all the highways that were going um, into Charleston. They made all those highways, those lanes leaving Charleston. So the highways that might have been two lanes were now four lanes leaving the area. So they need to talk to other states to find out how to, going forward, every state, right. every governor watching needs to talk to other states that have been through this in case it happens to you going forward. Yeah, the communication between the federal government and the governor has been strong. Uh, between the governor and mayor, they've been watching each other's back, but they do have somewhat of a different message. You know, Greg Abbott said, hey, if you're in a low-lying area, Corpus Christi or Houston, maybe even some of the other areas, you need to strongly consider evacuating. He said he that did. on Friday. Right. And so Governor is on the mayor saying don't. And there are a number of residents and rescue crews are saying that the city just wasn't ready. Uh, we're going to toss it on now to Janice Dean. Janice, you got us ready for this. And I'd like to say that you got the city of Houston and that whole area in Texas <laughs> as ready as possible with the information that you are receiving. What is the latest right now? Listen, I just want to add this. How on earth do you prepare for 50 inches of rain? Right. Really? Right. I, this will be debated for years to come. Uh, as far as the forecast goes, the National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, once we knew where the storm was going, on point, they knew that we were going to get historic life-threatening catastrophic floods. I mean, we couldn't believe the numbers seeing 50 inches of rainfall, and it's happening. So the National Hurricane Center did excellent work when it, it comes to forecasting. We did the best that we possibly could with the information that we had. Uh, but look at the, the rainfall totals, over you know 27 inches already. The problem is we're going to get more, more rainfall. Typically with these systems, sometimes a cold front will move through. Uh, you know, the jet stream will help things along. Not happening. We have nothing to steer this. And that's why we've got the potential for more heavy rain. The good news is right now the heaviest rain band has moved east of the Houston area. But the area of low pressure, the center of the system, is forecast to move back into the Gulf of Mexico. So is the potential for the storm to strengthen, perhaps bumping up the winds. The winds are not going to be the problem. It's going to be the rainfall and the threat of tornadoes, by the way, because we had dozens of reports of tornadoes with these landfalling systems. We see the potential for weak tornadoes. Nonetheless, with the rain, we could 
potentially see rain wrap tornadoes. So if you have your no weather radio, you need to, to keep it on. The good news is uh, the threat for tornadoes shifts a little bit more eastward. So Houston, you're not out of the woods yet, but things are going to improve in terms of severe storms, including tornadoes. Here's one of the reliable forecast models that was spot on with the rainfall forecast. You can see the area of low pressure moving into the Gulf of Mexico and potentially moving up towards Houston and Galveston again. And that's why we're seeing the potential for upwards of 18 to 24 more inches. 50 inches from a tropical system has never happened in U.S. history. Wow. Uh, Unreal. Thanks, Janice. You know, I'm pretty amazed, too, how uh, there's something about Texas, not to put down any other state. They like to take things in their own hands. I could not believe how quickly they're mobilized. They don't blame. They spring into action. And that's why you see so many people uh, helping other people and not looking to get a pat on the back. Yeah, we're, we're going to interview Reverend Franklin Graham coming up. He is he has started this organization called Samaritan's Purse. You've probably yeah. heard of it. It's a great organization. They've already rallied the troops. They've sent tractor trailers into Texas already. They're full of supplies like tools and um, emergency equipment, that kind of thing to help people rebuild. So if you want to give money to an organization, many people are asking how I can help. That's a terrific organization. It's Christian based and they just share so much love with the families that are in trouble. Just so beautiful to see humanity coming together. Meantime, Tropical Storm Harvey's catastrophic rainfall and obviously heavy winds in certain areas leaving behind vast devastation. All right, get this. You got more than nine trillion gallons of water. It's fallen already on Texas, but there's still more on the way. Rob Schmidt picks up our team coverage. He's live in Rosenberg, Texas, where roads are already giving out. Hey, Rob. Yeah, and this one, hey guys, uh, is a perfect example. This illustrates exactly how much water has come through here. So this is like a little tributary stream that runs underneath this roadway. Look behind me here. Uh, it just completely washed this entire thing out. It's just crazy to see. Uh, and of course, we lose the light right in the middle of the live shot. There's live TV for you. But uh, And there it goes again. Uh, but you can just see just a total washout. Just amazing to see what water can do when it runs through. Uh, and, and the governor talking about, you know, it, it, this is plain and simple. You know, th this is not an over-exaggeration of the problem. This is insane, the amount of water that they're getting here. You do not need to be out in this. You don't need to be trying to drive through uh, standing water. Don't do anything like that because the resources are stretched to the max right now. And if you do, you might not get saved at this point because there's so many emergencies happening. Let's listen to the governor. We want to emphasize the importance uh, when there is heavy rainfall, when there is flooding, the importance of staying off the road. Uh, if you drive into water, you're taking your life into your own hands. And you certainly are. And here's a look at a traffic camera. This happened last night. An incredible story. This truck overcome by the water. And we got to see on live television a local station's traffic cam showing a rescue, saving a man's life. Imagine if nobody was there. The guy would end up drowning in his truck. It's just incredible to see. As you move down south where the, where the storm came ashore, Rockport, Port Lavaca. I mean, there's a couple towns down in there, Aransas Pass, uh, where it just got eviscerated by this storm. You can see the video, the winds, 130 miles an hour ripped everything apart guys this has been a bad storm and it continues to get worse right uh all right uh thanks rob we'll check in with you again rob's been there all weekend but at 13 yep. minutes after the hour uh we also know too the president's going to be coming down there on tuesday and so far the governor and the communications with everybody else has been really strong yeah there's also going to be a press conference in about an hour and 15 minutes we'll be covering that well the images of course are heartbreaking people stranded in nursing homes waist deep in dirty water look at that picture we're live on the ground as new word of rescues is coming in straight ahead and no question this is a proud american the police officer who braved the storm to save an american flag that's coming up when we come back It's like nothing. Fox News Lord now. Thousands across Texas in need of rescue from catastrophic flooding from Hurricane Harvey. Now it's a tropical storm, but there is no relief in sight, nor does it mean this thing is let up at all, let alone the tornadoes that are scheduled. President Trump is now preparing to head directly into the disaster zone tomorrow. Joining us now to discuss the president's trip and more is GOP Congressman Blake Farenthold. Uh, Congressman, thanks for joining us. How do you feel about the Good president morning, coming tomorrow? Are you concerned about the logistics? Well, I think we're going to be able to pull it off. Corpus Christi, where I am now, is uh, starting to recover from the storm. But we've got a lot of areas uh, just around us, Port Aransas and Rockport, uh, that are in pretty bad shape. But I think we'll be able to handle the president here in uh, Corpus Christi. And the president's team has indicated they don't want to get in the way 
Uh, but the, the president wants to get a look firsthand at what's going on down here. Well, uh, meanwhile, he, uh, he tweeted this out. He said, great coordination between agencies at all levels of government. Continuing rains and flash flooding are being dealt with uh, and rescues are taking place. The University of Georgia climate expert said yesterday, he's also a NASA scientist, that this may be the worst flooding in our nation's history. Is there, knowing that, is there any, and knowing that the game plan can be thrown out, uh, thrown, ripped up then, how do you handle what's straight ahead? Well, you just keep on working. Texans are a resilient bunch. You've seen videos all morning of people helping people. We had that uh, down here with the windstorm uh, that was happening, and we're seeing it in Houston with the associated flooding. We are a resilient bunch down here. We're committed to helping our neighbors. So General Andre was just on, and he was saying, you know, he played such a vital role with Katrina. He said he would like to see more National Guards mobilized. What numbers are you at? What are you asking for from maybe other states? Well, right now the state is coordinating that with FEMA. We have natural, uh, National Guard on the ground here. Uh, Port Aransas, Texas, just right across the bay from Corpus Christi, was just devastated. We've got National Guard there. They're not even letting uh, people in to check their property unless that's their primary residence. Port Aransas is a vacation town. Lots of folks have second homes down there, and it's just not even safe there. The National Guard's uh, doing doing the work uh, right on the streets in, uh, in Port Aransas and other areas. Right now in Houston, with all the rain, uh, you're going to need the National Guard potentially in to help after the fact. But right now, in the middle of the downpour, there's not a lot anybody can do. Right. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Congressman. Uh, you guys got to stay coordinated so when people go to help, they know where to go. I know people just in the New York area, 120 uh, officers active and retired are heading your direction. Hopefully, they'll get some coaching so they'll be the most effective. Congressman, thanks so much. Now, it's, listen, it's a great country, and we're glad to have all the help we can get. Thank you, sir. Coming up straight ahead, our next guest managed to get out before the storm hit, but the rest of her family still in the disaster zone. Did they get enough warning? And liberal extremists taking over UC Berkeley once again, inciting new violence at the so-called anti-hate rally. Explain that. What? Back with some quick headlines on this Monday. Two big protests descending on Washington this morning. Al Sharpton leading the 1,000 ministers march for justice on the National Mall. And a 10-day march to Washington kicks off in Charlottesville in response to the deadly clashes in Virginia earlier this month. This after a town hall there quickly turns heated. Watch. Not a single person here is innocent of having some kind of hate. Any person on this planet can get their DNA checked you will have African ancestry. So this whole white supremacist, this whole, you're so like superior to me, it's a fallacy. Those two men shouting at each other after they finished speaking. They actually had to be broken up by people in the crowd. And President Trump is providing major backup for our police officers on the front lines of those protests. He's reinstating a program that supplies local police departments with surplus military equipment, including armored vehicles, grenade launchers, and high caliber weapons. Attorney General Sessions will announce the change later today. Ainsley. Thank you, Jillian. This is a Fox News alert. Tropical Storm Harvey delivering another major blow to our nation's fourth largest city overnight. While you all were sleeping, more mandatory evacuation orders were put into effect. As the Army Corps of Engineers makes an emergency move to open up the dams, flooding even more of the neighborhoods in order to protect the downtown area. Take a look at downtown Houston before and look at it after. Quite a difference. Those devastating floods overwhelm rescuers and forcing residents to their roofs, leading many to ask why a call to evacuate did not come sooner. Join us, joining us live now is Teslin Figaro. She and her 10-year-old daughter decided to leave their Houston house less than 24 hours before Harvey made landfall, but her family chose to stay. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Have you talked to your family? What are they going through right now? Yeah, you know, my main concern is, you know, I have an uncle, Uncle Daniel, who is uh, in critical condition, critical care uh, in the hospital at this moment. Uh, my aunt has been there.